you know, I always say leaky gut equals leaky brain because again, that gut lining is very similar. The, the blood brain barrier has a similar lining to protect the brain from pathogens and toxins and things like that. Uh, just like the gut tries to protect the bloodstream from these kind of, you know, toxic invaders, pathogens, things that drive up inflammation. So there's that intimate relationship. Can you go into a little bit more detail there? Yes. Yeah, so when it comes to um, anxiety, the anxious woman that I work with, there's some specific causes that I see as, as common causes with mm -hmm. of leaky gut. And I'm going to touch on two of them, uh, gluten and junk food and sugar. And I won't go into those in too much detail because there's a lot more awareness about those. And then I also want to go into a little bit more detail about alcohol because that one is often not mm. talked about. And this, this could be if someone is an alcoholic and also with social drinking. And I'm seeing a big uptick in social drinking, especially with anxiety, because we use it, alcohol to calm down, just to to fit in socially um, and, you know, to relax at the end of the day. So alcohol is a big one and it has some direct implications when it comes to leaky gut. And I'll share a really interesting recent study and, and how it does that. But let's just go into gluten first. You know, we know it's, it's pretty common knowledge that it damages the gut, causing leaky gut, and it leads to a lot of these nutritional imbalances that we just talked about. And there's actually some research showing that gluten itself can cause low serotonin and li it's likely via some of uh, the nutritional deficiencies that that are caused because of the leaky gut there's we know we know about the the gut issues when it comes to gluten diarrhea constipation failure to thrive and this damage to the gut lining but what a lot of people don't realize is there's a psych psychiatric component as well and there's a lot of research and certainly clinical evidence in my practice and, and with a number of practitioners seeing this increase in anxiety panic attacks actually social anxiety as well depression schizophrenia and bipolar with gluten issues so we've got gluten damaging the gut, and then we've got a di direct impact on mood as well. When it comes to uh, junk food, processed foods, and sugar, there's often an, an addiction here. Sugar is addicting. It, we use it to self-medicate as well. And I don't really want to go into this in a lot of detail, but I do want to mention it because it is it is a common factor that I see. We know that it changes the microbiome. It increases LPS and these pro-inflammatory cytokines. It lowers omega-3s. Artificial sweeteners and a lot of post processed foods impact the microbiome. And then so do emulsifiers, which in a lot of processed foods uh, guar gum, uh, xanthan gum, carrageenan, and, and cellulose. So those are some of the, you know, less, you know, more recognized um, than yeah. alcohol. Um, so I want to just mention the alcohol one, because this is less recognized, as I said, and it's often a very touchy subject because, you know, you think there's the one end, you an alcoholic, and the other end, there's this uh, social drinking. And I actually see it more as a, more as a continuum, and even social drinking can be an issue. And a lot of people who are social drinkers don't want to be told that maybe it is an issue, um, and you have to actually recognize it, and then there's something that you can do, do about it. And I'll tell you how, what you can do about it when we talk about the amino acids because they're very very powerful for carb addiction sugar addiction and, and even alcohol addiction but let me just share this interesting paper i think this was uh, published in 2022 the title is gut microbiota dysbiosis the potential mechanisms by which alcohol disrupts the gut and brain functions so they talk about um this, they're actually talking about alcohol use disorder. So they are talking about alcoholism. They talk about it being a high-risk psychiatric disorder. And there's a connection known as the microbiota gut brain axis. And they talk about alcohol disrupting the gut barrier, resulting in changes in intestinal permeability as well as, a, as affecting the microbiome. And this in turn impairs brain function and and worsens the patient's mental status and gut activity. Some of the mechanisms they talk about is effects on the immune system, effects on inflammation, and then they also talk about how the microbiome affects neurotransmitter release, including dopamine, serotonin, and GABA. And in this particular paper, they're talking about using the microbiome and addressing the leaky gut as a way to help with alcohol addiction. Mm. 
And in this particular paper, the solution is using a fecal uh, microbiota transplant, which is a, a procedure where you collect stool from a healthy donor and you introduce it into the, the patient's GI tract. But today, what I want to talk about is how to use amino acids to support the low serotonin and the low GABA that is the result of leaky gut and dysbiosis. So you've got this alcohol intake, it's causing inflammation, it's causing leaky gut, it's disrupting the ser- the neurotransmitters. So you've got low serotonin, you've got low GABA, but there is something that you can do about it uh, to both heal the leaky gut, address the low neurotransmitters, ease the anxiety, and actually stop the addiction as well. Yeah, that's really important to know. We need to understand this. And why do you think that, you know, obviously we know that alcohol can can disrupt the the tight junctions and impact the permeability of the gut. And so um, when it comes to low GABA, low serotonin, and you tied that in earlier, how when somebody has leaky gut, that can obviously cause protein malnutrition. So they're not getting the amino acids. They may not be digest or absorbing B6 effectively, right? which is really key zinc you mentioned, right? And so a lot of these nutrient deficiencies can then cause low brain neurotransmitters, which can then result in addictive behaviors and anxiety. So um, you have a, a strategy where you can go in and actually use those amino acids and, and are seeing really good results with this. So yeah, let's go into that in more detail. Yes. And the amino acids are amazing because they, we're going to talk today how it's, Firstly, they ease anxiety, and that's the focus of my work. I I work with um, individuals with anxiety, and I use these targeted individual amino acids to ease their anxiety symptoms very quickly. And we'll talk about two specific, well, three different types of anxiety today. We're going to talk about low serotonin anxiety, low GABA anxiety, and actually low blood sugar as well. They can all cause anxiety. And there's different symptoms in each of those areas that we use to decide which which one it is and then which amino acid that we're going to use. But in the context of today's um, interview and the theme of the summit, Leaky Gut, I'm going to share some really interesting research showing how each of these amino acids also have a direct impact on healing a leaky gut, which I think is so cool because the more I learn about the amino acids, the more excited I get about them because there's so many applications. But the other thing is these amino acids help with addictions. So now it's, it makes it easy to quit the gluten that's damaging the gut. It helps you quit the sugar that's causing inflammation and damaging the gut. And it helps you quit alcohol without having to use willpower. So it makes it easy to make the changes. It also stops that anxiety and overwhelm where you just feel like you're spinning and you can't actually get anything mm. done. So you know you've got an addiction, you know you, you're eating too much sugar, you know you have you love bread, you love cookies, you love bagels, um, and you love that glass of wine at the end of the day. You need it. It's your, you know, just, it's, no, don't take that away from me. I just, it's, I need it. It's my treat. It's my reward. It's, it helps me reduce stress. So we know we've got these addictions. We know that they make us feel good, these these uh, foods and, and and beverages that we use, but we can't stop. And when we've got a brain chemical imba- imbalance, it actually drives that addiction and it's, it makes us feel more anxious. So we know we need to stop, but we can't. And we use these, whatever the word is, sugar, carbs, alcohol, to self-medicate, to calm down, to self-soothe. And we, we stress eat because we're anxious. But there are specific amino acids, which we're going to talk about now, that help to heal the leaky gut. So, and then that means you're not going to get all these nutritional deficiencies we talked about. And it helps you quit these uh, sugars, carbs, alcohol. And I'm often asked, uh, where do you start? Um, someone actually asked me on Facebook when I, I said I was going to be on your, your summit. And I said, what do you guys want me to cover? And a lot of people said, where do you start? Do you fix the gut mm-hmm. first? and then consider amino acids, or do you uh, start using the amino acids at first and then fix the gut? And they said different practitioners have different approaches. And my approach is to start with the amino acids on day one. First day I'm working with someone, we start on the amino acids. Because it gives you hope, 
It gives you results and it makes the diet changes so much easier. You can quit the gluten, the carbs, the alcohol easily. You don't have willpower required and you're starting to heal the gut as we're going to hear about today. And you're easing that anxiety and that overwhelm, which is often very high as you're starting to go into trying to address whatever your issues are. Now, you may have other health problems that you're trying to address. You may have Hashimoto's, you may have arthritis, you may have multiple sclerosis, whatever the diagnosis is. If you've also got anxiety and you've got these carb addictions or this alcohol, need for alcohol, the amino acids are something to consider. So it's, they, you know, whatever the diagnosis is, think about what your symptoms are as we go through these today and then you'll be able to figure out which which category of anxiety you have and which amino acid might help. And the other question that I often get, Dr. Jockers, is where do you start? Do you address low serotonin first and then yeah. low GABA or low GABA or low serotonin or low blood sugar? And what I do is, um, at first I say, yes, we're going to definitely start on the amino acids. The second thing I say is, Uh, look at these symptoms, which we're going to go through in a second. Uh, Tell me which ones are most problematic for you in each of the three categories, low serotonin, low GABA, and low blood sugar. And we'll start in that area. Some people may find that the worry, the ruminating thoughts is more severe for them than the physical tension. Then we'll start with low serotonin. So I'd like to talk about low serotonin and um, yeah, those symptoms, and then we can go into the other ones as well. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds great. Let's talk about serotonin. Yep. Okay. So say, for example, someone said, you know, they they uh, look, look at all the symptoms um, and they decide that low serotonin is the area that they have the most issue with. That doesn't necessarily mean they've got the more severe symptoms. It just might be holding them back more. So with low serotonin, we have anxiety, worry, fear, obsessing, you could have full-blown obsessive compulsive disorder, you have ruminating, insomnia, you may lie in bed thinking and not being able to switch off that busy brain at night, rage, irritability, PMS, menopausal symptoms, TMJ, other pain. And then the clue with low serotonin when it comes to cravings and addictions is that they happen in the afternoon and the evening because that's when serotonin seems to go down. So what I'll have clients do is rate all of these symptoms on a scale of 1 to 10, and then they can say, yes, um, um, anxiety and worry is just just holding me back, and I've got this total overwhelm. I can't get anything done because of it. I really want to start by addressing low serotonin. And what we do is then we use do a trial of tryptophan or 5-HTP to raise serotonin and start to ease these symptoms. And what it does is it eases the anxiety, the worry, the fear within five minutes if if that's if it is low serotonin. And I, I use a, I do use these uh, sublingually um, during a trial, uh, doing doing this trials, and they they open the capsule that we use a powder, so we're getting results very quickly. Now, some people choose to continue to use uh, the amino acid sublingually um, if they've got gut issues, if they've got leaky gut, using the the uh, tryptophan or the 5-HTP opened onto their tongue or using a powder often is more effective. Well, but what this does is it eases those anxiety and the worry and the overwhelm, um, some of the PMS symptoms, rage as well, and it helps you quit the bread and the sugar, the candy and the alcohol. There was actually one woman in my community. She could not quit wine until she added tryptophan. Mm. She'd get home. Now it's late afternoon going into the evening and she had to open a bottle of wine while she started prepping dinner for her family. She knew she didn't need it. She knew she didn't want it, but she could not. She tried unsuccessfully for months. When she added in that tryptophan, it was easy, and she just could not believe how easy it made uh, quitting the, the the wine. And then I mentioned that with each of these amino acids, there's a leaky gut benefit. And um, I found this paper that was published in 2020, gut dysbiosis and serotonin, intestinal serotonin as a ubiquitous membrane permeability regulator in host tissues, organs, and the brain. And their hypothesis was that um, intestinal serotonin, and they're actually talking about serotonin that's produced by the gut, but we can extrapolate uh, to raising serotonin levels by using tryptophan or 5-HTP. They found they found that it participates and it has an important role in the regulation of membrane permeability in the intestine 
brain and other organs. You mentioned brain earlier. We both yeah. mentioned brain earlier in the leaky brain. But what we've got is by addressing low serotonin levels, in addition to easing the anxiety and stopping those addictions, it's starting to heal the gut as well, which I think is very powerful. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that as well. Now, when you do it, you prefer, do you prefer tryptophan or 5-HTP when somebody gets started? That's a great question. And some people do better on tryptophan, some do better on 5-HTP. Mm -hmm. I always start with tryptophan uh, simply because 5-HTP uh, has been shown to raise cortisol levels. So if someone mm -hmm. has got high cortisol or if we don't know if they've got um, high cortisol, we would want to use tryptophan. And there are some... Uh, uh, Serotonin transporter polymorphisms that may have an impact on whether you do what better with one versus the other. It also seems um, in perimenopause and menopause, uh, you may do better with 5-HTP because of low lower estradiol. So that wow. depends on age. And then also vitamin D status can have an impact. So it really, it's simple enough just to try one. If you have the low serotonin symptoms and you're not getting the benefits that you would expect, switch to the other one and see see which one works the best. And you should notice those benefits quickly. So if you try the tryptophan, you're really not noticing the benefits within five to 10 minutes or so. That may not be the right one for you. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And it may, you may say, well, my symptoms are not, my overwhelm and anxiety is like a nine out of 10. And you do tryptophan and maybe it improves to, to like an eight out of 10. If you get any improvement, uh -huh. that's a good sign. And, and what we what we do is we want to give it a chance and increase yeah. the dose because it may be tryptophan, but it may not be the right dose. Uh -huh. So we increase, if it goes down one more notch, then we increase again in a week's time. And we keep increasing until we find the ideal dose. If if you get no benefit, or maybe you just get one notch improvement, but, but nothing else as you increase, then I would switch to the other one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Really good. Really good. Now, obviously, uh, so you're doing a lot with serotonin, helping support serotonin, but how about GABA? There's a GABA type anxiety as well. Yes, so low serotonin anxiety is the ruminating, the worry in the head, the more sort of mental anxiety. With low GABA, it's more physical. You'll feel mm. that tension in the body, stiff and tense muscles maybe going up into your neck. Uh, physical, so a physical kind of anxiety where you've got, uh, you may feel it in your gut and your belly, and then you have the anxiety and worry as well, but it's definitely more of a, a physical kind of um, anxiety. And you may stress eat. So if you, you as you are more stressed, then you eat carbs and sugar, and this could be any time of the day, whereas low serotonin, it, it tends to be towards the end of the day and, and in the evening. With low GABA, it could be any time of the day. And I typically see low GABA dry the need to self-medicate with wine, more so than serotonin, but it, it can happen with any any kind of, you know, uh, uh, food or, or, or drink. Uh, but I'll often see uh, low GABA driving this need to have wine to fit in socially and then to relax at the end of the day. And you could actually have both. It's very common to have both low serotonin and low GABA and see some benefits with doing uh, serotonin support. And then we may layer in the GABA support as well. Now, with, with the amino acids, I only trial one at a time. That way you know what's working and what benefits you're getting. Um, and then GABA is always used sublingually. It's used sublingually uh, or opened uh, with the initial trial and then throughout uh, the, using it throughout needing it. Um, I don't find GABA works swallowed at all. Um, and certainly if you've got a leaky gut, uh, you definitely want to be doing, you know, you definitely want to be focusing on using it sub sublingually. And Again, very quick results. A lot of people, as soon as we do a trial of GABA, they'll say, oh, just feel like I had a glass of wine. And they'll just be oh. so relaxed and just feel so good. And that's what you want. You want to address the low GABA instead of using alcohol in order to get those same feelings. Mm -hmm.